Today's lecture is on gender politics within modern Judaism. As within Christianity and within Islam, uh, one of the main focuses of 20th century and 21st century women in these monotheistic religions is essentially taking back God. That's the title of a book by Leora Tannenbaum uh, that came out a couple of years ago. Um, in um, 2009, Taking Back God, American Women Rising Up for Religious Equality. She discusses how Christian women are trying to uh, regain um, a, a prominent role within their religion, access to interpreting the text, access to roles in worship, and uh, full equality within the religion and within the home. Um, she discusses how Muslim women are trying to do similar things, and uh, she, she herself is an Orthodox Jew and discusses the efforts of Orthodox Jews to also reclaim this kind of territory, to take back God. Within Judaism, as within Christianity, there are various denominations. So within Reform Judaism, women do have the right to be rabbis, the right to read and interpret the holy texts, and a fair amount of uh, equality. For instance, the little, little girls now have a, a birth ritual, a blessing ritual comparable to the circumcision. Uh, the the uh, young girls at 13 or 14 uh, have a bat mitzvah ceremony comparable to the bar mitzvah. So these are important areas of progress that have been made uh, within Reform Judaism and um, to some extent within the other denominations, uh, primarily Reconstructionist Judaism, Conservative Judaism, um, but less so in Conservative, in um, Orthodox Judaism. So the debate today over gender roles um, varies from denomination to de denomination within Judaism. Um, within Reform Judaism, the debate is similar to uh, the efforts within uh, the Episcopal Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Methodist Church, and that is um, issues of are women being promoted when they are ordained or do they remain in um, assistant rabbi roles? Um, are is women, are women having a, meeting a stained glass ceiling or are they um, gaining more ground in terms of acceptance in, in uh, theology, biblical interpretation, and leadership of larger churches? So similar issues for Reform Judaism as in uh, the mainstream denominations of Christianity. Uh, but when we turn to the fundamentalist wing of all three religions of Islam, Christianity and Judaism, we find um, more difference in terms of gender roles for women and men, and we find some battles still being fought. So um, the primary goal of 20th and 21st century women in all of these uh, religions is to regain access to the sacred texts. So uh, women are reclaiming the Torah. They're studying the Talmud. And I'll show you a couple of uh, books that are evidence of that. So this is Rachel Biala, Women in Jewish Law, The Essential Text, Their History and Relevance for Today. Here's another one by Judith Baskin called Midrashic Women. And Midrash is interpretation and debate over the meanings of passages. And she talks about formations of the feminine in rabbinic literature, the Talmud, and other texts. Uh, Rereading the Rabbis, A Woman's Voice by Judith Hauptman. So within Judaism, women are making great progress in terms of reclaiming access to the text. Um, the second effort is regaining or gaining for the first time access to full participation in worship. So are women allowed to hold the Torah, to read from the Torah, um, to have leadership roles in rituals and in worship? 
um, are they blowing the shofar? And uh, this is increasingly true across um, the across all denominations of Judaism. Uh, but the the most difficult area in terms of regaining access to uh, owning the liturgy and taking a full role in the liturgy is within Orthodox Judaism. So there we've had within the last couple of years we've had a woman ordained to be an almost rabbi, uh, to be a rabbi in full um, responsibilities and um, training and um, access to all forms of leadership of worship, except that the name is not rabbi. Uh, there's another name that she's called. And Leora Tannenbaum has a uh, blog about this particular issue within Orthodox Judaism on the Huffington Post. So if you want to know more about um, women becoming rabbis in Orthodox Judaism in the U.S., uh, you can read about it through her blog. Um, so um, another area of em emphasis and debate and gender politics within modern Judaism is simply laying claim to our past and honoring our past. So um, books that do this are Anita Diamond's The Red Tent, to, to reclaim the time of separation of women for their menstrual period and to see it as a time where women have a rest and are allowed to bond and be together and not uh, being separate for negative reasons, but a time uh, given to them by God um, as a special uh, restorative time. And we see that in um, another book called The Women Who Dance by the Sea by Miriam, by Marsha Mirkin, finding ourselves in the stories of our biblical foremothers. So going through the um, classic texts in the Torah that involve women and reclaiming for ourselves these stories in a positive way. Uh, one figure who is being reclaimed is Lilith. Um, so one of the classic um, articles reclaiming Lilith is by Aviva Cantor in this book on being a Jewish feminist. So women are reinterpreting Lilith not as a negative figure who's a threat to uh, to the wife and to the a threat at the time of childbirth out of jealousy, but as a woman who um, stood up for herself, who was supposedly the, le the legendary first wife of Adam, who refused to live in under the rule of Matt Adam, but said, if I can't be an equal, I'm going to, live, to leave. So um, part of the task of retaining, re claiming scriptures is to reinterpret legends such as Lilith, to reinterpret figures such as Eve. Um, for example, one person who writes about reinterpreting and reclaiming Eve as a positive figure is Nancy Dutton in an essay called Forbidden Fruits and Sorrow, written in 1986, which is collected in this book, Eve and Adam, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim readings on Genesis and gender, collected by Kristen Pfamm, Linda Schering, and Valerie Ziegler. So I'll just read a few lines from Nancy de Tom's essay. Um, she describes living and working in Israel for a few years uh, with, child, with two daughters and sending them off to study in public schools in Israel. And she describes how in her own uprearing, Eve was uh, understood as a negative figure, the one who had caused problems, who tempted Adam, etc. kind of the way many of us were raised with an understanding of Eve. But she describes a, a wonderful scene where um, a day when um, a new view of Eve was born on the day when I saw Eve through my daughter's eyes. So she says uh, her daughter Tamar was five years old when she came home from kindergarten and asked 
In the special voice, a young child reserves for proof positive of an elemental truth. Haisha pitata et ba'ala nachon ima? The woman seduced her husband, isn't that so, mom? And when I told her, yes, that was true, she declared with triumph, then she was the first to eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So uh, her older sister, Merov, came home in that same week from the study of Genesis in first grade and declared, I want to eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and, of good and evil. And to her, the mother answered, don't you think what it, that's what it really means to be going to school? It's all about learning. And Merov replied to me in the special voice that a child reserves for a parent who doesn't know any better. But I want my eyes to be opened up all the way. So um, she, she decides that her daughters have been taught a completely different version of Eve in their public school in Israel. Um, she is the prime mover in Eden. But unlike the Eve of anyone I had met before, she was the heroine, not the villain. Um, then she quotes from Elizabeth Cady Stanton, who is defending Eve in her book, The Woman's Bible, in 1895. And uh, Stanton comments on um, Eve as a positive figure, um, not silenced by competing cultural messages. Um, and um, so she's, she's interested that these daughters are teaching their mother a different view of Eve uh, when she herself is a biblical scholar. And I'll just read one more sentence. She says, um, I was astonished by the clarity and simplicity of the vision of two little girls, five and six years old, for whom Eve was a heroine, and the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, a heroine's prize. To paraphrase Hillel, that is all I have to say. The rest is commentary. Why didn't anyone else see Eden through my daughter's eyes? So uh, Jewish women are reinterpreting some of the classic figures. Uh, Eve, Lilith, um, definitely other biblical figures, uh, women, and as well as reclaiming knowledge of uh, the prophets, the female prophets, and of Deborah, the judge, and others. Um, so, reclaiming the text is one major activity. Uh, regaining ground as uh, full leaders within a worship situation in Judaism. Um, uh, I'll just mention two more books. This is She Who Dwells Within, A Feminist Vision of a Renewed Judaism. So this is um, women giving their input as to the kind of Judaism they want to see today. Um, for some women, this is a less nationalistic Judaism in Israel and more willing to care about the Palestinians, more willing to care about the women who are suffering on the other side of the political fence. Um, I'll just mention one book. Uh, this is called Christians and Jews in Dialogue. Learning in the Presence of the Other by Mary C. Boys and Sarah S. Lee. So um, redefining even uh, some of the major themes of Judaism uh, with women's perspective. Um, here's another book called New Jewish Feminism, Probing the Past, Forging the Future. So again, um, studying Torah, but redefining emphases and um, claiming uh, a, an altered view of Judaism because of women and their input. Um, for instance, here's um, a chapter called Orthodox Women in Rabbinic Roles. So this is all evidence of uh, women reclaiming the Torah and reclaiming their roles. However, one really difficult area remains, and that is uh, the essentialism that is, has been in the past um, a part of Judaism and many, many ancient culturally based religions. 
and um, how to handle that today. So uh, in 1945, in a translation of the Torah, um, we have a comment from the translator uh, defining the importance of women's roles. Um, this is Joseph H. Hertz, editor of the Authorized Daily Prayer Book. Sorry, it's the prayer book, it's not the actual Torah. And he says, um, this is in 1945, he discusses the, the role of women and the, the very important uh, role of women in maintaining the home and um, maintaining the family and the importance of um, child rearing within marriage, um, that the purpose of marriage is twofold. One is raising children and the other is companionship. So in this definition of marriage, um, it's primarily the woman's role to be um, producing and raising the children. And um, there's a very strong bent against a marriage without children or against anyone who would not marry. So this is based in Genesis. Um, and in fact, the, the preface to this, um, this uh, daily prayer book says, only through married life does the human personality reach its highest fulfillment. Um, so, um, so, a difference in roles for men and women uh, has been an important part of Judaism and still remains very much so in Orthodox Judaism. Um, we even find gender segregation to be on the rise um, in neighborhoods where Orthodox Jews um, are the main culture. So for instance, in Brooklyn and New York, um, there's even, there has traditionally been a segregation of the genders on public buses. This has been challenged within the last year, but um, the argument for preserving it is that this is a cultural thing and the, the government should not interfere with our cultural wishes. But um, the gender segregation on the buses involves the women being at the back of the bus and the men being at the front. So there's definitely um, a separate but not very equal pattern happening. Uh, this is also happening in, in parts of Jerusalem and Israel where ultra-Orthodox Judaism um, is the, the dominant uh, religious uh, population. So um, because Orthodox Jews emphasize family so much, um, their population is growing in Israel. And uh, this news report uh, from the Associated Press last November says that, um, that the percentages of um, Orthodox Jews within Israel are growing because of the emphasis on child rearing and child bearing. And um, it says that the high birth rate of about seven children per family among ultra-Orthodox Jews is forecast to send their proportion of the population, now estimated at 7 percent, to 15 percent by 2025. So um, this is a population that's growing within at least Israel. And um, it, it holds, like, like conservative Christianity and conservative Islam, um, ultra-Orthodox Judaism holds to a view of the genders as essentially different and needing separate roles as a result of these very important differences. This, is, this concept is called essentialism, and the idea of separate but supposedly equal roles is called complementarity. Um, so this is part of the debate and the part of the gender politics within Judaism today. Um, there are some people who are, are fighting this and saying these are public buses and, and um, there cannot be a gender discrimination on the streets of Jerusalem or on the streets of Brooklyn. Um, but there are others who are saying this is my religious belief and it should be respected. So um, this is part of the debate that's continuing today. Um, so 
Meanwhile, on the, um, on the subject of rabbis and leadership within Judaism, we had the first generation of women Jews now retiring. So the, very, the, the U.S.'s first female rabbi, Sally Priesend, retired in 2006. Um, and we have a second generation of, of rabbis now increasingly working in Jewish congregations. Uh, but the issues there are the dominance of um, and acceptance of men and um, how to get full equality for women in terms of hiring and promotion um, within Judaism, within the congregations that do hire women. So these are some of the main elements of the debate uh, within Judaism today. And um, that's about it. Thank you.